Okay. okay. Once again, thank you all so much for being here. We're going to ask that everyone please mute your phones uh, if you're not talking. My name is Dawn Cooper. I'm the Assistant Vice Chancellor for College Access Initiatives at the University System and also the Gear Up Georgia Project Director for the state. Uh, we want to welcome you to our first ever Gear Up Georgia Career Exploration Webinar. We are so excited to have our guests from the Georgia Film Academy here to talk to you about all of the experiences, uh, what Georgia Film Academy is about very briefly. And then we will have a panel of former students who are currently working in the film industry to give you some insight on their preparation and also what a typical day is like in that field. So thank you all for being here so much. I want to first thank all of our awesome program coordinators that are here uh, today as well. Um, so we have awesome, we have Jasmine Grant with DeKalb County. We have Greg Kirk with Clayton County. We have Dawn Harrison with Thomas and uh, Seminole County. Christina Barrett, who is represents our priority counties as well. We have Randallette Williams from Muskogee County. So thank you to all of our awesome Gear Up program coordinators. Also our, our USG Gear Up staff as well, myself and Melissa Gattuso, who will be facilitating the panel. Uh, we have Ms. Annette Bradley, we have Cheryl Thomas here uh, as well so far, and I'm sure others will be joining. I wanna thank all of our students and parents for being here, all the staff, our amazing school coordinators. I see that we have Ms. Angela Fontaine with Muskogee County Schools. Uh, and please let me know if I missed another school coordinator. Did I miss any school coordinators on the line? Okay. All right. Well, we want to thank you guys for being here once again. Um, super excited. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you all uh, the person who is responsible for us being able to have this wonderful event. Uh, Ms. Kate e. Ardle with the Georgia Film Academy, and she's going to give you a very brief overview of what the Georgia Film Academy is and what they do, and then we're going to move into a video. Kate? Hi there. Hi, everybody. I hope you can all see me. I can see, only see my little box. Um, it's nice to see everybody online here. Yes, I'm the Director of Film Workforce Development for the Georgia Film Academy, which means that I'm in charge of working with the students who go through our program and helping them to get placed into professional opportunities on film and television shows um, shooting in Georgia. So we have a kind of unprecedented program which has a relationship, a, a contract with the local unions, and those unions are film unions that cover all of those on-set jobs, like people who work in the art department and costume department and hair and makeup and lighting and grip and all of those different kinds of departments on a movie set. Um, we were created in 2015 at the behest of the governor who said, tons of movies are coming to Georgia, taking it Incentive, but not enough Georgians are getting jobs on those movie sets. So what he did was basically um, put aside an appropriation to create the Georgia Film Academy. We're a partnership between the University System of Georgia and the technical colleges. We've grown from offering 18 unit certification program through three partner schools to now we offer our courses at 22 partner schools around the state. Some of those partner schools, which are listed on our website, georgiafilmacademy.org, some of those schools are four-year universities. Some of them are two-year two -year technical colleges where you can get an AAS degree. And for people who are not interested in a college degree right now, uh, because you either have one or you're trying to decide what direction you want to go, you can take the Georgia Film Academy production certification courses um, directly through our continuing education partners. Again, all of this is on our website. Website. It's um, Atlanta Technical College, Georgia Piedmont Technical College, and Clayton State. They all offer a not for credit option, meaning you get credit towards the certification, but, but not necessarily college credit. <clears throat> and so once you go through the program, the first two courses, uh, the intro to onset film production, and then one of our credit courses, you can apply to get into the internship, which I think is kind of the secret sauce of our program because you not only get to observe people working on major features and TV shows, but you get to work in those departments. All of my students who get into the internship are placed on shows like Infinity Wars and Ant-Man and Spider-Man and Walking Dead and Ozark and 
on the Tyler Perry lot, <clears throat> and my students go to work on those shows in those departments. They work for a month on a show in order to get their hands-on experience and their academic credit. So that was the base this of our program was created to develop um, workforce opportunities for Georgians in the state. And now we're everywhere. We're in Columbus and we're in Savannah. And like I said, we're in, I think, 22 partner schools. My colleague Josh is here somewhere and he might <laughs> he might correct me. And we're also expanding our curriculum. We're expanding out into the esports world. So in part partnership with Georgia State, we've created a, an intro to esports course uh, created by the gentleman who runs and owns Skillshot, um, which is one of the esports companies in, in Georgia. And if you didn't know anything about esports, um, it's a huge, huge, huge business here. So we're expanding in that area. <clears throat> we're looking at some more online offerings and just generally um, developing a more robust post-production um, slate as well so people could come and learn editing and pro tools for sound so that's that's who we are <laughs> that's who we are and like i said i'm the director of film workforce so i work with students in helping them get their launch and their experience um, into the industry thank you so much kate before we jump into a video on the program does anyone have any specific questions for kate there's a lot of information that's going to be shared uh, from our panelists a little bit later, but Kate might not be on for the entire call. Um, so any questions at all for Kate about the Georgia Film Academy program itself? Okay. Well, Kate, uh, if we do get any questions after you have to jump off, we will save those and send them to you, and we'll make sure we send those out to students as well afterwards. So thank Perfect. you so much, Kate. We appreciate you yeah. so much. Thanks so for having time, me. Absolutely, absolutely. So this time, uh, Melissa is going to share a very short video on the Georgia Film Academy so you can actually see a little bit about what Kate was discussing just now. So, Melissa? Top three film and television locations in the U.S. and in the top five in the world. The Georgia Film Academy was started in 2015 by the state as a way to train local workers on television and film productions here. Inside Stage A at Pinewood Studios in Fayetteville, you'll find a hardworking group of aspiring movie makers. We want to make movies in the end, but we definitely want to learn from the ground up. Karen and her son Patrick heard about the Georgia Film Academy and wanted to give it a try. We learn, I think, everything from A to Z in terms of what actually happens on set from the beginning to the end. Last year, there were 248 productions in Georgia, bringing in $7.2 billion and a lot of jobs. Over 100,000 Georgians are now working due to film and television production. And the new Georgia Film Academy is hoping to keep those many jobs here in Georgia. That we wanted to make sure that we have enough crew to sustain all of this production and really bring it uh, into the future. The goal of being certified with the Georgia Film Academy is to get a job. <laughs> There are a plethora of jobs in the film industry. The course includes plenty of hands-on training, including an internship on local productions. Today's production assistant is tomorrow's producer. And most really good producers started at the bottom. And those internships can also lead to permanent opportunities. We have somebody in wardrobe in The Walking Dead. We have somebody working in the AD staff on The Walking Dead. We have students that are working on MacGyver now. 209 students were recently a part of the first graduating class of the Georgia Film Academy. My son is now in the motion picture business out in Hollywood. I'm selling my business and I would just want to start another career and get back into it on the motion picture side. And you don't have to be an active student to see your name rolling in the credits of a major motion picture. You can take the classes through continuing education programs. And it doesn't matter what age you are. I had several people that were in my class that were in their 40s and early 50s and we can do it. So it doesn't matter for students where they are in their life. They could be 19 and uh, taking their first college classes, or they could be 50 years old and looking for something new in life. It's a program where the sky's the limit. Everybody's not a four-year college student. So if you can bring your talent, you can bring your hard work, you can bring your desire to the film industry, we can only do really, really great things in this state. So I'm very excited about the opportunity to help build a program where Georgians don't have to leave the state to work in the industry. 
because there was definitely a time you had to go to New York or L.A. to get anything done. Now, the Georgia Film Academy is a collaborative partner of the University System of Georgia and the Technical College System of Georgia, which is made up of more than 50 colleges and universities in our state. So it makes it Great, great. Thank you. Again, Kate, thank you so much. You guys can see we have a lot of great information that we're going to hear from folks about uh, the actual experiences in the Georgia Film Academy. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Melissa, and she will have our guest panelists introduce themselves, uh, let you know a little bit of information about themselves, and then we'll go into the panel discussion. Melissa? Thank you, Don. Um, I was looking at the logins, and if possible, I would love for our panelists to put their cameras on if they can. So we know who we're looking at, who's speaking, um, and that way we'll be able to read your nonverbal cues and feel more like home. Um, but I do want to go ahead and let them introduce yourself. If you could, let us know your name what high school and district and state you originally are from, which post-secondary institution uh, you went to with the Georgia Film Academy. Kenya? Hi, I'm sorry. I was having a little trouble getting my uh, camera set up. I'm Jada. I was one of the Georgia Film Academy alums. I originally, my high school was Burkmar High School over in Duluth or Lilburn area. And I attended Georgia Film Academy through the Gwinnett Tech, uh, the Gwinnett Technical Institute. So right up the street from there. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Can we have our next Absolutely. panelist? All right. Hi, my name's uh, Hunter Tubach. Um, I went to Milton High School up in uh, Fulton County, and um, I went through the Georgia Film Academy through the Atlanta Tech School, and it's been really interesting to go through it. Thank you, Hunter. Um, I believe we have at least one more panelist. Um, Kenya? Hi, yes, um, I am Kenya Morgan. I attended Druid Hills High School in DeKalb County several years ago um, and then had a career in a different industry for about 20 years and then attended Georgia Film Academy uh, on the Clayton State campus. <laughs> I was actually part of one the first graduating class for GFA. Thank you so much. Um, and I want to open it up to see if we have any other panelists with us. I believe I believe we have the three. OK, great. So I'm going to ask each of you to answer this one question and we'll go in order of the way you uh, introduced yourself. So the one question we want each of you to answer is what made you choose to attend the Georgia Film Academy? I chose to uh, join the Georgia Film Academy because I'm really interested in becoming a director and a producer. And a lot of the courses that I've been looking at through the different colleges through Georgia State, um, I know Full Sail has a couple of courses, and um, they all required um, a lot of in-school technical, not even technical classroom training. And I really wanted to just be able to get in there and get my hands on in there. So when I heard about Georgia Film Academy, they had a pretty short program. My program only lasted about six months, so I knew I was covering all the basics without having to require, you know, year-long study on it. Um, so once I heard about that, I was really interested, and then I sat down with my school, and they explained, you know, the intricacies of the program. Of course, again, how short it is, the internship, and the different craft courses. I was really interested in joining in after that. And um, I joined through a uh, GFA to get to broaden my knowledge more on what I learned in school allowed me to expand upon what I had learned get my degree and it allowed me to further myself to get to gain more knowledge to help 
translate that to onset, which allows me to have more knowledge and share that I know what I'm doing and how it'll help get me that next job and so on and so forth. I came to the Georgia Film Academy after, as I mentioned, after um, a career uh, in a completely different industry. And it came about um, right as I was in transition out of that job into the next step of my life. My college degree, actually, I started out in uh, at Florida State's film, film school, and it didn't quite work out the way I'd hoped. And I ended up graduating from Georgia State and didn't really get what I wanted out of that. I ended up with a music recording degree. Um, but I, when I found out about GFA, I was like, oh, wow, this is an opportunity for me to come back and revisit something from 20 years previous and try again. And that's exactly what I what I got. Um, I got actually a much more robust education than I feel I would have gotten if I had just stuck just with film because it would have been like, here, this is how you write a script and this is this. Whereas with the Georgia Film Academy, I get the absolute from the ground up, um, which is a more comprehensive view of how to create films and how they're made and a lot more of the inner workings, how the sausage is made, if you will. Um, and I feel that, that makes me a much more valuable um, employee on set um, and to different department heads and just not just in with the department I work in, but across the board. Thank you guys so much. We're going to ask this last question is for each of you and then we'll start letting you um, kind of take the questions you want to answer. So if each of you could answer this question, what's a typical day? What was a typical day like for you when you were in Georgia Film Academy with quote unquote classes? So uh, my first class, the first, the course that I began with was, of course, just the intro to filmmaking. So just a day to day look into that course was we would begin actually with a different film clip. Each of the students would have to have our own film scene that we had previously analyzed and gone over for, you know, just different things to look into. So we'd learned. Oh, I'm sorry. So we'd learned the depth of fields. We'd learned the night. I'm so sorry, my cat's in the background. <laughs> I'm sorry, my cat's in the background. Um, but yeah, so the things that we had, we, the videos, I'm sorry, I'm a little flustered. I'm not used to speaking <laughs> on screen. I'm a little nervous. You're doing so let me great. Just and my cat is literally <laughs> sitting on my shoulder. Like, I'm surprised you can't see him. Um, yeah. You're doing great. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm just not used to it. but. Getting back onto focus, so we began our days with each of the students would showcase a scene that I said previously analyzed. We'd look into uh, the foreground and the background of, for my, for example, my scene was the Lord of the Rings. So I would, you know, describe different things that I'd seen in the scene. And <laughs> going forward into that, we would also, um, I'm so sorry. Do you mind if I actually just go second? If I can just get a, a moment to just collect my thoughts. I'm so sorry. I really want to be able to explain how great this program was, but I'm a little flustered. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Thank Hannah, you, so you want to take a stab at it? Um, what a, a typical day while you were attending Georgia Film Academy was like? Um. Yeah, with the intro, we'd learn how to break down a scene using uh, scripts looking at what would entail like what props we would need what uh wardrobe what special effects we would need and in my the craft course i took set construction we'd do a little bit in the classroom and then we'd go and learn what different tools we would need what the measurements that would make it that we would need to get the exact measurements to make sure that the set looked good. We built a set and learned how to use paint and stuff like that. Thank you. And Kenya? Um, what I recall are the days where we, as, as young lady would say, where we would have a clip and uh, that we would break down ourselves based on the information that the instructor would give us. 
Um, they would tell us, you know, what we're looking for. We would just learn about different camera terms, the depth of field, the perspective, color temperature. Um, and then I remember there were certain projects where we would have to create it ourselves. We'd create our own little scenes, um, you know, teams of two, three or four. And we would take a scene, let's say, from Forrest Gump. And we would learn what is happening in this particular two minute scene. And then we would need to recreate it um, with our cell phones. And, you know, we'd have to we'd have our own script from that particular couple of minutes and that couple of minutes. Um, and then it would it would be our responsibility to reproduce that as best we could. And of course, so long as we were exemplifying that we understood the concepts, <laughs> of course, we don't have that budget, <laughs> but uh, so long as we were explaining that we that we understood uh, the concepts, then it was absolutely wonderful. I mean, my favorite days were doing the the scene analysis, but I'm a bit of a nerd in that way. So That sounds like so much fun. That really does. Jada, do you want to add any more to yeah. it? <laughs> I think I got my thoughts together. <laughs> Thank you. And um, on top of that, we also learned just different set etiquette. So I learned walkie lingo, how to speak into the uh, to different department heads. We learned the breakdown of a lot of different departments, which I didn't know going into. I knew, you know, of course, hair and makeup the camera, but they really went into depth of, you know, how the breakdown of producers were, executive producers, how the breakdown of all of the department heads were. So I really got a better feel of what to expect when I went out onto set and who I would be meeting there and the different positions. And then, of course, on top of that, we learned the different equipment we all had on set um, and the different roles that we would be taking up. So I could kind of get a better idea of what I would be interested into doing. Oh, that if was I, perfect. Thank you. Sorry, if, Go ahead, if I could add one more thing, what my instructor reiterated so many times was the length of these days that when, when we start working, <laughs> the yep. length of the days. These aren't just an eight hour day, a 10 hour day. These are long 12 minimum usually our days and to understand that to prepare yourself for that prepare yourself for being away from home being away from pets being away from friends you're certainly not texting really and you know everything's got to be on silent when you're on set but it's just reiterating that these film crews become your family because that's where you're spending the bulk of your time that's great. It's it's fun for someone who has no idea to hear about how much education is going into teaching the culture of of the setting, the workplace that you're in. Um, we're gonna. I'm just gonna start asking some questions that we have prepared. If you want to answer it, just go ahead. Um, and then also for the participants that are on this call, if you have a burning question, go ahead and write write it in the chat. And then we're going to start getting to some of your questions as well. And so um, do any of you, Jada, Kenya, Hunter, would you like to tell us or are you super proud of where um, you are currently working right now? Uh, well, I can't say that I'm currently working there just because we had to close down to the due to the virus. Um, but before coronavirus had begun, I'd actually been able to get a job through Georgia Film Academy um, at Tyler Perry Studios. So I was working full time as an accounting clerk there. I'd been there from July to about March when they closed down. And I got that position actually entirely due to Kate. Um, I'd gotten an email a couple of months actually after I'd finished my internship and everything just saying, you know, Georgia Film Academy, um, a former Georgia Film Academy alum is looking for someone who's interested in this role. And of course, I reached out and I got the job. So that's another huge benefit of Georgia Film Academy is even after I finished, even after I graduated and got my certification, I'm still getting emails from Kate saying, hey, look, we have these jobs available. So we're really seeing a network that's coming from this. Anyone, Kenya or Hunter, do you want to answer? You want to move to the next one? <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to move to the next one with the caveat of understanding that this industry that we are learning so much about and that we are becoming part of that we are building and is growing, you know, got a huge whack in the head because of COVID and 
you know, literally the production's all shut down. So there's many of us who are going into month number six or seven um, without work. But we also know that it is coming back because as um, more precautions are being put into place, things are coming back in. I'm sure many of you are hearing about, you know, is it, you know, what industries are safe to come back to work? If you're, you know, if you're watching the news and hearing what's going on, ours is one of those. Ours is absolutely one of those. Um, and I have a couple of jobs that are pending. Um, fingers crossed. One of them is Stranger Things. I've worked on that show uh, season three and a couple of days on season four. So now we're just waiting waiting to come back in so well we will be thinking about you and sending you good mojo and Hunter do you want to just briefly talk you are back to work correct and you are working yes. in terms of COVID yes um I what my job entails it's a clean set so basically what I do is um when people are done walking around hitting like high risk areas like doorknobs, chairs, anything like when they wash in their hands to go eat, hitting the sinks, the towel dispensers, soap dispensers, anything that might pose a risk for them contracting COVID, go sanitize that and making sure that nobody who uses it after will get COVID. And who do you work for? It's through Netflix. Um, Netflix. They've, they've implemented this on a couple, on a small, couple small shoots out in California. It worked well. So they're testing it full scale on film. They're shooting here in Georgia and it's going smoothly. And I hope it'll last a while so so I can keep working. Thank you. I'm sure Kenya yeah. and uh, Jada appreciate your efforts. <laughs> could, I, could I jump in with something there Absolutely. for a second? I just wanted to say that speaking of that, you know, because everything's been down and there's so much concern about COVID safety compliance, um, it, a, an indication of things that we're coming back up are these jobs that are production assistants, but they're production assistants self has safety and health assistance. You know, so it's a hybrid form of being in a department, being responsible for all of those things that Hunter was talking about. Um, the Walking Dead reached out to us, the Georgia Film Academy, and asked for people who would want to do those jobs. 14 positions in all their different departments. Ozark, the series, reached out to us and said, do you have any students who want to be PA slash health and safety people? So it's a, it's a funny kind of a hybrid job that may not be around forever, but it's also an opportunity for people to get on set and be in a department and see how those departments work. So, and it's an indication that more shows are coming and, and being as safe as they can possibly be to bring on uh, more employees. That's, that's exciting, Kate. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have learned already something that's new or that a lot of students might not think about with the long days. Some days are long days. Is there anything else? that you found surprising that you've learned that you would like to tell students? I'd say the most surprising thing that I learned specifically on set was, and also kind of piggybacking off of what Kenya said, is how close we actually got uh, while working on set, the whole crew. Um, I was only on my internship for one month. I um, was working on Undercover Brother 2. It went straight to Netflix. It was through Universal. Um, so it was a pretty smaller end size of crew, but we all still got to know each other really, really well. And by the time that end of the, uh, that month was up, that month of shooting was up, we'd all become really close knit and I still have connections with them to this day. That's nice. It sounds like a sports team almost. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. Nice. I have um, a question in the chat I'm going to go ahead and get to, and it said, Jada, you said your program was six months. How many classes did you take and how long was the internship? 
what is a typical length of the program? So this may be a Jada and a Kate um, answer. So uh, my program was actually, um, I took two different courses. They were actually six months each. Um, so I took, I began with the intro to filmmaking, which was um, from about August to the beginning of December, or I'm sorry, beginning of middle of November. So around that six month period, it was a couple of years ago. So I don't remember the exact time frame off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, my intro to filmmaking course was about five to six months. And then I did go on to taking a lighting and electric course, which was, I believe, between three to six months. If I'm, am I off of my numbers, Kate? It's a semester long. Each of yeah, those are semester, semester long. So they're about almost four months. Mm -hmm. Okay, four months. So it was closer to four months that I was Six. doing each of those courses. Um, and then, like I said, my internship was only for four weeks. Um, but they actually, at the end of my internship, they asked if I could extend it for a little bit longer um, because the filming shoot went on for one more week <laughs> and they didn't want to bring on a different PA. So they just reached out to the academy and asked if I could just stay on a little bit longer. Okay, Kate, did you have anything to add to that? Add to that in terms of like a typical typical courses and, and yeah. internship lengths? Yes. So each um, each class is a six unit class. So that means that they meet six hours a week, um, and you have to take the intro to onset film production first before you can take any of the other courses. So your first semester would be one class intro to onset film and they normally meet one day a week for six hours so you can have an opportunity to spread out what you're learning into the hands-on portion so you take the intro class for one semester the second semester if you pass that class you take one or multiple craft classes whatever you're interested in those are on our website but there are things like grip and rigging lighting and electric set construction and scenic painting uh, special effects makeup uh, production office management, production accounting, and then as I said before, we have avid post-production editing classes. So you would take one of those. After 12 units, that'd be two classes, each class of six units, you can apply to get into the internship semester. It's competitive because there are not 150 slots for people every semester. But if you get into the internship, then I work with a student to place you on one of these shows, like our alum have been on. Um, it's required that you do 160 hours, 160 hands-on hours, and that equates to, if you're working every day, five days a week, for hours a day, that equates to a month on a show. So that's what you most students do, is work a month on a show for their, for their internship. You can also, if you don't get into the internship, you can apply again, or if you decide not to because you have some other options, you can take uh, two craft classes and the intro class to make up the 18 unit. But to get the certification, you have to successfully complete 18 units. Great. So I'm going to ask some mom questions now. So how does a student get into the program? So I got into the program just by going, like I said, I went to Gwinnett Technical College. So I just went directly to the college and I reached out about the course and um, they actually helped me apply straight through the college. Um, and it was a really simple process. I had to do one application, fill out an application fee, and then I was on a waiting list for a period because it's such a competitive course to get into. I believe I was on the waiting list for only about two to three months, and I just began my courses through them. I can add to that, which is now that we've expanded, when these um, alum <laughs> took the GFA, it was a number of years ago. So we've expanded a lot since then. At that time, they were required to take two courses. The internship was worth 12 units. But now that we've gotten involved in a lot more university level uh, partners, uh, the, the accreditation for those classes changed. So we needed to have the internship only be six units like the other classes. Hence the reason you take three. But to get in, the choices are these. You can identify a four year school. That's one of our partner schools. And if you want to go to that school, you have to apply to get into that college. And then once you're accepted into that college, you can choose to take GFA classes. 
If you want to get an AAS degree, you can choose one of our technical college partners like Gwinnett Tech or Southern Crescent Technical College. You can apply to get in there. Once you're accepted and in their program, you can take our courses. And then finally, like I said in the beginning, if you don't need a college degree or you don't want one right now, or you want to do this simultaneous to a degree program, you can go to one of the partner schools that offers Con Ed. So Atlanta Tech, Georgia Piedmont, and Clayton State all offer the opportunity for someone in the community to just go on their website, look under Con Ed. When you see the course listed, when it opens for registration, you register, you reserve a seat, and you pay for it. <clears throat> and those are the three ways you can sign up for classes. Great. And I'm I'm sure other people are wondering, but because these are, are ran through the Technical College System of Georgia and University System of Georgia, are they approved for federal, like federal Pell Grants? Can you can you use um, grants for paying tuition? You can get grants and apply for financial aid if you are in a four credit program. So if you're in a four year degree program or a two year degree program, you have access to all the same financial aid opportunities others do. If you're in con ed and you're not getting a degree, you are not eligible for federal or state um, financial aid. However, if you qualify, meaning that you need, you need the money to take the courses, there are programs like WIOA, um, which is the Workforce Initiative Opportunity Act, I think it is, but it's a state program that, allow, that gives grants to people who are lower income, who want to retrain for what are called these high demand careers. So for example, if you went to Atlanta Technical College and you just Googled WIOA, W-I-O-A, and Atlanta Technical College, it'll pop up the page that describes how you do that. So there are, there are options, there are other ways to get money, but, but it's not a federal or state education grant like that you would normally get or financial aid. Thank you. So I'm gonna ask the, the big question while hopefully our students and our parents and our educators are going to put some additional questions in the chat, but from our panelists, what advice would you give to a student that is semi, maybe a lot, maybe just a little interested in the career industry? I would say definitely give this a shot then, especially that intro to filmmaking course. If you're even on the fence about it, it teaches you so much more than is available kind of just on a regular Google search. It gives you really an in-depth knowledge of how a set and how the hierarchy of film works. So you get a better understanding of what kind of jobs are available and what might interest you. So when I, when I started out, I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do on the film set and how to get there. But after finishing just my intro to filmmaking course, I was a lot more certain in what I wanted to do and what my career path would have to be going forward. I will second the uh, the intro to film, absolutely. If for no other reason than if you're not sure what department what what departments even exist. I mean, it's one thing to sit and watch a movie and wait until all the credits scroll. And then that's one way to, to learn about what hap what you know what goes into making a film. Um, but it's something completely different to be there and understand what the tools are, what your what the expectations are, um, how they are interconnected with other departments. And you may not realize, oh hey, maybe I'm actually more interested in this particular aspect instead of this. And this is this program is a way to get a you know to get an overview of what it is, what they are how they work together and where you would fit in. And it the people who teach these classes really know what they're talking about. And it definitely makes you want to learn more and be engaging and wanting to go learn what the different departments are. And it gives you a lot of hands-on experience in these classes which definitely makes it worth while learning what each department does and how a film comes together and what they do and how important it is so 
Sounds like a great class. You've got me interested. Um, Don Harrison, I see you have a question. I would love for you to unmute yourself and, and ask so everyone's just not hearing me all the time. Hello. <laughs> so I've worked in continuing ed for seven years uh, with my institution. So my question is, how much are the continuing ed classes if a student has to pay out of pocket? Man. Hi, uh, this is Kate. Um, $750 a class. Thank you. You're welcome. And since we're talking about money, I saw some figures on the website. Um, can you maybe give us some estimates of what um, the entry level pay is or the average in the industry or for Georgia in particular? Well, I can speak in generalities and maybe our alum could speak about their area that they work in. Is it different if you are just starting as a PA and if you're already in a union that governs the craft that you're working in? So Kenya works in costuming, wardrobing, and if you're in the union, it's a whole different ball game as to how much money you're going to make. But generally speaking, as a, a production assistant, which would be an entry level job in any of those departments on a TV show or a movie set, it's around $200 if you're a day as a day player. So it's 200, about $200 for a 12 hour day. Um, that's, that's what you could consider to be pretty normal salary as you're starting out. But again, what, if you're in any of these particular crafts, like if you're in costumes or grip or lighting or whatever, and you get into the union, then we're talking about, I mean, I don't know what they are now, but let's say an entry level grip might be $25 an hour. So it's a definite increase. But but so the, the data shows that the average salary for people working on set in the film industry is about eighty five thousand dollars a year. Um, in the first couple of years, when you're trying to get into the business, you're not making eighty five thousand dollars a year <laughs> because it's a sporadic industry. It's a freelance business. You may work for a month and not work for two months. You may work for six months on a big Marvel movie and then not work again. So. Um, until you establish yourself in the industry over a number of couple of years where you're the go-to person for that department, uh, you know, we're talking about lower end of salary. Once you get a little few years under your belt, then you're starting to head towards that 50 and 16, 70 and 80. And people with a lot of years experience who are higher up in the hierarchy of the unions, they make um, some of them multiples of six figures. But I would say starting out, you could ask for 200 bucks a day <laughs> if you're a day player on a show. And yeah, I was in the accounting department um, and I was a payroll clerk, which is an entry level position. Um, and my rate went about that same was about $200 a day. So about $1,000 a week before taxes. So that was the rate that I had begun off, you know, just as starting as a clerk in accounting with no prior experience. Learning the lingo too, day player. Yes. All right. Funny so I'm going to let y'all do some name dropping or some movie dropping right now. So like what's the most excited set like you were on? And what what's that like? Like how do you compose yourself? <laughs> uh, the most exciting set I was on was actually um, my second internship I had earned was with Watchmen. Um, that was my first time as payroll so i actually got to meet a lot of people because being in payroll i got to hand out the checks so i met everybody on set and it was a really exciting experience it was over in um <laughs> i love watchmen too <laughs> um it was over at atlanta metro studios and they had a whole bunch of different sound stages so i got to kind of walk through and see all of the different sets they built and i got to stand behind regina king in the nacho line so that was a really cool experience for me too <laughs> uh, the the shows that i've worked on because of because of the nature of my department since i am in costume and i tend to be a person who is more comfortable in the office in the in the in the costume office doing uh so i work as a coordinator um as well as a set costumer um 
so the coordinator is the one who's in tightest, com tightest communication with payroll and accounting. So I am assisting our department supervisor with making sure bills are paid and purchase orders are handled. So if you're understanding, you know, if you're good with finances or willing to learn those finances and watch where the money is going, then that's, you know, there's that. And a couple of different departments also have coordinators. So I tend to stay away from set. Um, those occasions that I do go to set, um, my goal is to just keep my head down, keep my phone off, keep my walkie on. And when they call, you know, wardrobe, you there and like, hey, it's Kenya, go for Kenya and and get in, get out. <laughs> I'm really not much of I'm terrible with with actors names. It drives some of my friends crazy. Like, but you work in him like, yes, but they put their pants on one leg at a time, just like I do. So. And um, one of the interesting sets I was on was actually in my internship um was at a company off uh, Sydney Marcus Boulevard JCE films it was American Soul they were doing the all that and as an office PA just running mail to the different departments making sure that they got that going and dropping off stuff and occasionally having to run to set to hand the ADs something. And it, it, it just, it was interesting to see how big a studio could be, which allowed me to navigate my way around the studio if I got hired on somewhere else and it, I'd know what I was doing and I wouldn't be sidetracked looking at the actors and stuff like that. Great. It seems like you're very prepared not to be starstruck. <laughs> and um, you know what? I just want to add to that, which is part of what they're taught in their basic classes, is how to how to deal with celebrities and people on set. You understand pretty quickly that being on a movie set is a little like, and you guys can say if this is true for you, but it's a little like being in the army. <laughs> it's a little like being in the military. It's very hierarchical. And there are very strict rules and regulations, especially when it comes to fraternizing with people who are actors and celebrities and executive producers and directors and stuff. So they are trained in the Georgia Film Academy about what's appropriate and, and what's not appropriate when they get onto a professional set. So do we have any more questions from participants? I have a question. All right, will you let us know who you are? Uh, it's me. My name is Jasmine Grant. I'm the program coordinator um, at Georgia State, and I work with DeKalb County School District. Um, and just for students or parents, um, do you know if there are any specific studios or companies that offer scholarship opportunity for Georgia Film Academy, like directly tied to the program from for the partner institutions? I don't know of any studios that directly offer that as a program in place already. Um, I think the DeKalb County Film Commission might know a little bit more about what kinds of opportunities there would be, especially Black Hall Studios, which is in DeKalb County. It's south off of Moore Park. I mean, I could look into that further. I'm just not aware of it myself, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And I think if you're in DeKalb, the DeKalb County Film Commission people know a lot. They do a lot. They're very progressive about all the ways in which they reach out to community, especially to students. So maybe that would be one good place to start. And then you could also email me, too. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, we have a couple school counselors on this video. Um, is there anything you would recommend to school counselors in the way that they work with students on career exploration in terms of the film industry? Oop, who's that for? Anybody? Anyone. <laughs> Do you guys? Do you former GFA people have any thoughts on that? Um, what to recommend to counselors? Um, I think it would just be really a, a really good way to almost advertise this program is to explain the benefits of how it helps 
sets you up for a film, a career in film and understanding deeper, kind of going back to what I said earlier about learning the different positions in film. And as Kate said, the hierarchy of film is it, it really gives you just that groundwork for beginning an actual lucrative and long career in film where you know what you're doing and how to do it. It's definitely definitely a stepping stone if you've got students who are thinking, oh, wow, they've got stars in their eyes and they want to go to L.A., they want to do new, go to New York. And this day and age, who knows when that's going to actually be, you know, a viable option. Um, but because Atlanta has and Georgia has become the Hollywood of the South, a lot of what they want is right here in their backyards. But I also understand many times it's the adventure of leaving home and going away. But for some that could be, oh, look, this is already here. I could get my feet wet here in Atlanta or in Georgia and then spread my wings and go someplace else once the time is right. So, you know, it's it's that be here, support what is here, support part of the, support the industry that we are working so hard to build. Um, and, you know, keep those rev keep that revenue coming back into the state. <laughs> Make us look better. Yeah. And I would also say, uh, referring back to what we were talking about before, uh, um, this is not necessarily high school, but I've gone to speak more recently to some junior high kids. And um, most kids are enamored of the celebrity part of all of this. So either they imagine themselves to be writer, director, writer directors making their own films or they want to be movie stars <clears throat> and it's and I would never be one to squash anyone's aspirations but were I a counselor at the high school level I might even have a little packet of information that delineates here are the jobs the real jobs in the movie business here are the set positions in the movie business here's like how long a job actually lasts here are the salaries like we talked about before so that they get a you know, a little packet. I mean, I could even help people with this. A little packet that just says, here's the reality of it. Because um, again, you're young, so you aspire to a lot. Nobody wants to say you shouldn't aspire, you should. But um, having a basic understanding of this is the real world in the beginning, it would be very helpful if counselors knew that. And maybe they do, and, and I just don't know it, but that would be my advice. Well, thank you. I was reading your mind about that whole putting a packet together. <laughs> so we'll be in contact. Um, we are almost up with our hour. I want to thank our panelists and, and Kate so much for joining us, answering so many questions, giving us such great information and better understanding of what Georgia Film, Film Academy is and what it can do for our students or future students. So I'm going to do one last call for anyone who would like to ask a question. Um, but uh, other than that, I do want to make an announcement that next Tuesday's Film Academy, um, people are saying thank you if you have your camera up and you can't read the lots of thank yous and great information. Next week's um, career exploration series webinar will, will be on FinTech and that's uh, careers in the financial technology uh, arena. And you got to think about the, the cash shortage and everything right now with our money is um, using technology. So join us for that. Uh, again, thank you so much. I don't see any additional questions. I just see tons of thank yous and great information and I echo that times 10 so thank you guys so much thank you very much for, for having me thank yeah, you same. thank you bye everybody bye Melissa we have to announce our winner for tonight see there's a reason I shouldn't do this <laughs> I don't know how that gets drawn. Um, who is the person that does that? <laughs> I will be the person making that selection on tonight. Okay, great. You let us know who our winner is. <laughs> yes, our winner is. Sorry, I'm getting back to her name. And we did have a lot of people um, leave. So just uh, as long as they put their name uh, in the chat, I believe they are entered. 
Well, actually, they have to be on the line to win at the, to win at this time. But our selection tonight is Miss Kayla Johnson from Stone Mountain High School, DeKalb County. Kayla, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Yes. 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 Thank you. Great. So, Kayla, what we're going to need for you is to um, email garupgeorgia at usg.edu. We'll put it in the chat. Um, we'll need to know in the email your name, your address, um, your mailing address, an email address um, that you will check, um, and your school and your district. So, um, in the chat, if I could have your program coordinator go ahead and put our Gear Up Georgia email address in the chat for you, and then we will look for your information in the email to send you your gift card. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And in addition, Don would like for us to open our cameras, if everybody would get on camera, and Melissa, she would like for you to take a screenshot of everybody on uh, the session on the webinar tonight. Okay, so Teams is set up different. We can only have a block of nine at a time. And you can't change um, roll over so I can get a picture of nine people. <laughs> I've got I've got three right now on camera. <laughs> we want our awesome gear up students. Gear up students to get on camera. There's Joshua. I'd love to see Kayla. Do you have a camera? You just won money. <laughs> there you go. Any other people willing to get on camera? I got the ones that did, Cheryl. Miss Fontaine hopped on. Here we go. <laughs> Thanks, <I'm done. laughs> All right. Okay, so are we good? <laughs> yes, ma'am, we're good. Great, great session tonight. Mm -hmm.